lights, camera, action. Okay. You're watching Food as Medicine, where we help you heal from the root cause so you can feel whole again. Aloha! I am here on the most magical island of Kauai with my friend Will Revac on his farm and I'm so excited to be here. We're talking about oral health today, the oral microbiome. Will, how did you get into oral health and really, you know, dedicating your whole life to it, really? It was really an answer to prayer. Um, many years ago, my wife Susan and I run this business, Oral Wellness. Mm -hmm. And um, as an answer to prayer, we're like, okay, where's our home-based business that does no harm, that really helps people, that's fulfilling, that we can work from our jammies at home? Uh -huh. And um, that was 2007, I think we kind of set that intention. And it took a while, and then we finally realized, like, maybe we should be talking about what Susan did many years ago, um, addressing her own issues with advanced gum disease. So going back 22 years or so, early 90s, Susan was, was diagnosed with advanced gum disease. And rather than go the conventional surgical gum treatment route, mm -hmm. um, she took it into her own hands, went back to the same dentist a year later, and the dentist said, I must have mismeasured last year because you have no signs of... Oh, that's fantastic. So, you know, through the years, Susan shared that with friends and family, and then we put that intent out saying we'd like a home-based business. and. That's when we said maybe we should be talking about gum disease to people. This is where passion and lifestyle entrepreneurship meets passion, really. Exactly. And Susan is our lovely camera woman today. So that's fantastic that you reversed your gum disease naturally. Guys, it is 100% possible to do that. Um, why is it? I feel like a lot of people just kind of gloss over their oral health. And in private practice, you know, I always would bring it, them back to that because it's the origin of so many other issues within Absolutely. the body. So why is it such a blind spot in our culture? There's a lot of different factors. So two real factors come to mind right now. Um, number one, we learn oral hygiene at such a young age that we don't think about it. It's mm -hmm. like, you know, Imagine um, anything else that we learned when we were a toddler. I mean, we learned to brush our teeth when we were, what, two or three years old, roughly, right? Mm -hmm. So should we go get our crayons and, and draft a letter? You know, it's like, when do we not revisit a subject that we learned at a toddler age? But that's, that's part of it, I think, and what happens from so that... So there's a problem, probably. Yeah, well, I mean, we, what we learn when we're two or three years old, we should revisit and see if there's a more refined mm -hmm. or a more um, well, refined way to, to go about it, really. Okay. So... That brings us to a mental disconnect. So we, as a culture, by and large, have this mental disconnect in our lives. And we kind of commonly point this out as asking people a common question of, of um, how many teeth do you have in your mouth? And Do you know? Do you know how many teeth you have in your mouth? I didn't. And that shows us right there like, ooh, okay, I'm disconnected with what's going on in my mouth. Mm -hmm. So this mental disconnect plays a really... Um, negative spiral. We just don't know what's going on in our mouths, so we feel helpless to the, and victimized to the dental industry mm -hmm. as a result. How many teeth do we have in our mouth? We should have 32 to start with, and then most of us, me included, had uh, our wisdom teeth removed at, mm -hmm. at late teen years. Me too. Yeah, so most of us adults have 28, although that can, that can vary. Okay. Yeah. So a couple of oral health myths that, that most people believe. Yeah. Tell me about those and how do they impact us? So, <laughs> these myths really undermine our health, okay. okay? And you know this as well as I do from your world, and it's very similar. Mm -hmm. These stories that we play or these maps or these models that we utilize may help head us in the wrong direction if we're not careful. Yeah. So, one of these myths is what goes in the mouth stays in the mouth, okay? That's how we name it. This shows up as using oral hygiene products that as long as we spit, it's okay, right? Because it's not going to go into the bloodstream. Well, that's a total myth. It's false, right? We know that from conventional, from alternative medicines, homeopathic mm -hmm. medicine mm -hmm. absorbs through the cheek and gum tissue faster than if you swallowed it. Right. Right. So what we put in the mouth goes through the whole system, whether we like it or not. And so that's one of the big myths that we deal with. The other myth that I want to address is um, this notion that all plaque is bad. Okay. Yes, this biofilms, right? Exactly. Positive biofilms, just like we want in the gut. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So what happens when we think and we apply this idea of all plaque is bad? Like mm -hmm. we've been taught for decades, mm -hmm. right? That, oh, we got to kill 99.99% of the germs in our mouth. And 
Well, what happens is, well, let's look. How is it working for us? Mm -hmm. Right? Our sad statistics in the United States say that 97% of men, women, and children in the U.S. have some form of active oral disease. Mm -hmm. Call me Wait, silly. I'm sorry, how many? 97%. 97% active form of oral gum, so a low level of gum disease. Is or tooth decay. Or right. tooth decay. Gum disease and tooth decay are your two primary right, oral diseases. Right, because it's like you don't check labs for that very often, although many holistic dentists can run any of those True. labs. True. True. The sad statistics are what they are, so call me silly, but I believe that if what we were doing were working, mm -hmm. <laughs> those statistics should be a lot lower. Sure. Right? So that's the danger of applying a myth and believing a myth that's not true. Mm -hmm. It'll undermine our health and it could theoretically head us in the wrong direction. Well, yeah, you're swallowing that bacteria or protozoal infection or whatever it is all the time. It's affecting all of your other six microbiomes as they're communicating inappropriately to each other now. Exactly, exactly. So what are, what are some solutions? If, so now if 97% of, of all of us have some low level of gum disease, Right. You know, I've talked to my tribe a lot about oil pulling, and I use I use this. I use your um, healthy mouth blend, yep. and our gut thrivers do as well. They they'll oil pull with it. So, yep. so what are what are some solutions? So, let's take a real broad look at it at first. Okay? okay, what we have found is that we have to balance the oral microbiome. Mm -hmm. it's, we have to get away from this idea of of what others in the industry talk about a scorched earth policy of just killing everything because right, obviously that doesn't work mm -hmm. okay to balance the oral microbiome we have to be what we call good conductors of the symphony in our mouths okay mm -hmm. it's really what it is i mean you can look at it as a kind of a street gang mayhem situation for some people's mouths but really it's a symphony and we just got to get them playing nicely together and balanced out Okay. Right, I either say it's open warfare in any microbiome or I like the idea that it can be a symphony. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So what we've learned through the years is this, that the mouth and all the biomes really are a biological complex. Okay, we have biology and chemistry interweaving here, making this biological complex. And what we found is that the biology always wins. Okay, mm -hmm. so let me ask you a question just off the cuff here. In gut microbiome work, how well do antacids work to treat the root cause of indigestion and heartburn? Uh, they advance the root cause quite uh, effectively. <laughs> Precisely. So yeah. if we don't address the biological factors first, mm -hmm. then applying just a chemical approach, an antacid, just a chemical approach to a biological complex mm -hmm. doesn't really work right. and may actually head us in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so the solution, like in Gut Thrive, we've got five steps for gut healing, but the mouth is, is the most transient place, right, in right. the human body. And right. you're literally, the microbiome inside the mouth is changing, I would imagine, minute to minute. Truly. So what, what's the healing process there to go from gum disease to symphony? Well, we have to, um, there, there's a strategy and then techniques within that strategy. So the strategy is to balance the oral microbiome, to be a good conductor, to be a good steward of our oral microbiome. The strategy, the technique then that we apply is we have to disrupt and disorganize these, we call them thug bugs because yeah. they don't have our best interest in mind. They're pathogenic microbes. Right. So we're looking to disrupt and disorganize these pathogenic microbes where they want to colonize in the mouth. So that's really the primary technique that we apply within the strategy of balancing the oral microbiome. So you don't have to use like send in the Marines and kill everything approach. Yeah. We can just go in and disrupt these bad bugs where they're trying to undermine our health. Doing that through using uh, lower levels of many different essential oils? That's one of our approaches, absolutely. And then how do you disrupt the biofilm? So I'm going to I'm assuming plaque. Let's call it plaque and biofilm. Let's say they're one and the same, right. but there's good biofilm and bad biofilm. Right. So how do you disrupt the bad pathogenic biofilms to get at these bugs Great. without disrupting the good biofilms? Great question. So this is the primary piece of managing your, your oral flora, balancing your oral flora, is how can I be a good steward and get the biofilm thin? Because, uh -huh. I mean, let's just talk about biofilms in the oral cavity right now. Biofilm on the teeth is good. It protects our teeth from acid, yeah. right? It buffers the, because the, I mean, the, you think about the teeth, of all the, the biomes in the human body, the teeth is they're unique mm -hmm. in that 
everything else, our gut biome, our cheek, our skin, they have cells that slough. Our mm -hmm. teeth don't slough, mm -hmm. right? So it builds plaque as a protective mechanism, mm -hmm. right? That's our, that's our immune system there. But if it gets too thick, now you're getting into an anaerobic zone. Now you're breeding and, and facilitating the, the colonization of pathogenic microbes. So it's keeping your biofilms thin. Got it. Keep your biofilm thin. Right. And you do that by not attacking. Right. So what is your take on something like people who use Listerine every day? Um, is that the scorch the earth? Yeah. Okay. Well, especially now. Okay, mm -hmm. Listerine back in the day was essentially essential oils, right? Mm -hmm. I mean... In my opinion, it was too strong of a dilution. It was too potent, too concentrated. I mean, you're not supposed to burn your mouth. Right. right? That's a bad sign. Right. Um, but nowadays, lots of Listerine uses alcohol, which mm -hmm. dries mucosal tissue. That is mm -hmm. heading in the wrong direction. Right. If it's drying out your, your saliva is your friend. Right. Right. That's like the, the kingpin as far as your immune system in your mouth. Right. So we've got to take care of our saliva, and anything that dries that is bad news. All right, so how much of a role, you know I gotta ask this question, does nutrition play in, in maintaining a healthy oral microbiome? Well, it's huge, of course. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, it, that's a whole series in and of itself, really. And, and of course it's a big point, but just to split hairs and have fun with this, because I know you'll align with this too. As important as nutrition is, the research pretty clearly shows that it's not the primary mm -hmm. role, mm -hmm. that stress is actually the primary role. I believe it. Research that's been done that's shown like you can, I don't endorse the idea of using lab rats and any of that, but people have done the study, so let's learn from them. Right. Right. So you can put a lab rat on a diet that does not cause tooth decay mm -hmm. and put it in a stressful environment and it gets tooth decay. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to manage our stress. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. It is, it's so powerful, like the negative effects of stress. And what I find really, it's so tempting in the real food movement, in this movement that we're in, to stress on eating well. Right, and then, That's yeah, so and tricky. then people who are, you know, having fast food could be healthier than you if you're, well, it's almost a form of orthorexia, right? Where you're so obsessed with what you're eating, it can't be clean enough or perfect enough. So we need to just relax. Chill. Come to Hawaii, chill out for a little <laughs> bit, right? And and live that 80-20 balance. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, within, you know, when we talk within gut thriver, gut health, yes, we now we've thinned that plaque lining. Right. We've gotten to these bad microbes. And then do you recommend reseeding by gargling with probiotics or just chewing your ferments really well to help support the positive biofilms you're reinforcing? Um, what we suggest is swishing with your saliva. Okay. Okay, the saliva is our innate immune system. It's loaded with probiotic bacteria, our, our good bugs in our so body. So just like let the saliva build up and we've got a move video. it around your yeah. teeth? We've oh, got a video okay. on our site called Mouth. We coined the term many years ago. It's silly. It's really old. I apologize for the camera quality. But, okay. Um, called Mouth Probiotics, probiotics that teaches a technique that students in my background is in the Chinese longevity arts. Okay. okay. That's what we've studied for the past 30 plus years. And one of the traditional techniques from the, the Chinese and, and Hindu and Indian practices is to utilize that saliva because it's a precious fluid of the body mm -hmm. and utilize that to inoculate and circulate in the mouth and then of course swallow it because then that's bathing the whole digestive tract. I love it. Yeah. It's so simple. It's and really holistic simple. and we really have everything we need to heal and it doesn't cost anything right okay so let's um let's talk about your new product um that helps remineralize cavities okay because this is really important it's not something i'm well versed on but some of my friends very healthy friends where i know they were healthy in preconception they were healthy pregnancies and now their kids at age three and four mm. they're getting cavities they're getting and they're trying unsuccessfully to remineralize their teeth so i just shared with them right. your your product so can right. you talk about that for a second yeah and absolutely this is, this is yeah so this is our wellness shine um this shine. is a this is our remineralizing and tooth whitening powder um it's part of our approach. So, so right now we come from a two-prong approach of looking to rebalance the oral microbiome utilizing our healthy mouth blend okay. and then remineralize. So that's, yeah, so that's the biological approach of treating the biology first. 
And then how do you use this? Because it's a bottle of mixed high quality essential oils so right. that you're having people put it on their toothbrush yep. or like I said, I oil pull with yep. it. You can brush with it, you can floss with it. It's really, really powerful. If a person has bleeding gums to put a drop on their floss and run it on the floss okay. and get that between the teeth, that's really incredibly potent. I wouldn't have thought about that. It's a really great way because gum disease tends to get going between the molars first. And so it's more difficult to get in there and it's disrupt and disorganize. Get there. Okay. Yeah. So floss works very well. Okay. That's a great tip. Um, so brushing, flossing, swishing, mm -hmm. oil pulling idea, mm -hmm. um, or direct massage. You can put a drop on your finger if you know you got a spot that's and just, in stress. Okay. And get in there and give some love to it. All right. Yeah. And then after that, you can use the shine. Right. Then you go to shine. Uh -huh. Okay. And you know we've got more information on our site how to utilize them, how to use them in conjunction, and, and different strategies there. But Shine is an answer to our desire to offer the, the world a, a product solution that will not just clean the mouth. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we all have our vain egos that want to have white teeth and all that, but really when we're 60, 70, 80 years old, we want something that's going to hold together. Mm -hmm. And so, and even like, unfortunately for young kids, I mean, it's happening earlier and earlier. Right. So what can we do? We have to address the biology in the mouth and then focus on the chemistry. And Shine does a really, really good job with this. I'm very pleased. It took us over three years in research and development to, to get Shine to where it is. We got tremendous feedback from our customer base um, telling us how they're, like their dentist is saying, I don't see the decay anymore. Yes. Now, I've got to put a, a, a bit of a disclaimer out there. If you've got a huge cavity in your mouth, that's not going to refill. No, this is all preventative where you're getting to it in the beginning, you're starting to think about your oral health and you want to have your teeth for your whole life. Right. So yeah, you, you want to start yep. to take care of them. That said, when decay happens, it happens under the surface of the surface enamel first. Mm -hmm. And that's what a dentist will call a white spot lesion. So when your dentist is poking around your mouth with that sharp metal object and you know, that's, uh -huh. you're not supposed to do at home, right? Uh -huh. But they can do it. As they're poking around your mouth looking for soft spots, that's mm -hmm. what they're looking for is decay that's happened underneath the surface mm -hmm. of the two, of the surface enamel and it's decayed underneath. Shine works phenomenally well on that to remineralize that subsurface decay. Right. That's where we want to catch it. So right. not only does Shine address future decay, help us prevent future decay, but it also addresses us with active decay right now. I just don't want people to go away thinking like they've got a big crater in their tooth and it's going to refill. That's right. not what we're saying. Right. Okay. The beauty or the secret sauce, if you will, of Shine is that it's made with microcrystalline hydroxyapatite. Now that's a big word. It sounds super complex, but it's mm -hmm. microcrystalline. It's really, really tiny particle size. Hydroxyapatite is a compound of calcium and phosphorus in a certain ratio that happens to be the exact ratio that our teeth are made of. Perfect. And you're using actual bone. Yeah. Grass-fed New Zealand cow bone. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Good, excellent, I love it. So um, what are your final thoughts? There's so much talk about what goes in our mouth, whether it's oral hygiene products or foods that we eat. Um, I'd like to broaden this out a little bit and say that what is perhaps more important, at least equally important, is what we allow to come out of our mouths. So we can choose on a moment by moment basis, on a day by day basis, to speak words of beauty, to speak kindness, or to speak poison. And the, the drawback, of course, to speaking the poison is we're the first ones to get hit mm -hmm. by that negativity, but so is everybody else in earshot. Mm -hmm. So I really challenge us all. You know, there's so much negativity out there that we can focus on. Let's choose to be a force of good in the world. Let's choose kind words. And if we don't have something good to say, let's listen to our mama mm -hmm. and let's not say anything at all. Yeah, that's beautiful. The same concept of the whole journey is the primary food. Sometimes has right. nothing to do with the actual intake of substance, right. right? It affects you so much more. Absolutely. Thank you so Thank much. You. Will has put together a free ebook for all of you that dives much deeper into oral health. You can find it at thewholejourney.com slash oral wellness. No opt-in necessary. If you want to try any of these products and up-level your oral health, which you know I think you should do, you'll get a discount over there. And I am going to leave you with a quote from my absolute favorite great uncle who was like a grandfather to me via Soupy Sales. He says, be true to your teeth and they will never be false to you. Thanks so much for being here and we'll catch you next time on Food is Medicine.